Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. $2 trillion worth of options are expiring today. Remember yesterday we said that these options expiries for some of the larger stocks, Cassava's over a billion now. They've got the weekly expiring options uh, for like larger stocks do, but those are not as, uh, don't have nearly as much uh, volume and open interest as the semi-monthlies. Well, this is a semi-monthly expiration today, not just for cassava, but across the market for a lot of stocks. And uh, it is a just a, a brutal day in the market, just a brutal one, a brutal day in the market because of it. And cassava's max pain, cassava's max pain, I've got it at one source as 26, where it was hanging out earlier, and at one source it's 25 where it seems to be hanging out now. We'll take a look at Cassava, Google, Spy, uh, the indexes for uh, Biotech, IBB, and XBI. We'll take a look at all their max pains. While we're at it, we'll look at Apple, Amazon, Tesla, and the Qs as well for all, the, all their max pains, just to see, just see uh, where, what their, what their, uh, this carnage, is, is, is the carnage from max pain? Maybe, maybe not, but $2 trillion in options. This is a big expiration day. Uh, let's get right into it. Not an investment advisor, not investment advice. Number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best investment research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's all misinformation and disinformation because it's controlled by hedge funds and special interests like Big Pharma. But that's okay. We've got each other. We've got Investors Club. Let's get into it. Let's get 22 people. Great to see you guys. Be better if the I guess it was the stock surging that, well, that had the eyeballs here. That's okay. We'll have to, the stock will have a lot more great days. Hey, this is from Bloomberg. So there's $2.1 trillion of options expiring today. Most of them are on the S&P 500. So this is SPX and uh, SPX over here as well and SPY. So most of it's, S, uh, most of it's SPX or SPY, S&P 500. Uh, so it's really broad. It's broad across the market, but there's also $430 billion in single stocks, single stocks. If you're wondering what the difference between XPX and SPY is, SPX is just the index. It's, you can't actually buy the XPX as an ETF, for example, whereas you can buy the SPY as an ETF. But the SPX is the index, but you can still bet on it with options. So there's X, or the XPX, so you can bet on it with options. But those are not; those are European style options, so they're always cash settled on the day of expiration. Uh, whereas with regular options, the spy options, you can actually you actually get the shares. So if you you actually buy the right to buy the shares, and at any time you can exercise and actually take possession of the shares, XPX is actually just a bet, a cash settled bet that is settled on the expiration day. All right. So anyway, it's, uh, there's uh, two, more than $2 trillion of options expired. It's going to have a, that's a lot of money. It's going to have a big impact on the market. Uh, and, but I just thought this was interesting as while we're here, by the way, this is the VIX. This is the uh, S&P 500 performance down here. And this is the VIX up here. This is the volatility, measure of volatility as the options show. So the VIX is, a, is the implied volatility uh, shown in options. So if you buy an option, it's very expensive. That's, uh, that means that the, the, the uh, people think that the stock is going to move a lot, and usually it does. Impl implied volatility is usually correct. But if you look around the market and add up all those implied volatilities, is it, or is it very expensive to buy options right now or very cheap? And then, so that's a measure of volatility, or it's really a measure of how people feel about the market going to be volatile. Is it going to be volatile? How expensive is it to buy options? So anyway, as the market recovered, volatility just declined, almost like a mirror. Like just almost like a mirror. That's a, just very interesting. So volatility, of course, as, as, as the market sells off, people get scared. Volatility, okay. But as the market recovers, uh, look, at, look at the fear just drain out of the market. So very interesting. I thought that was very interesting. And then, so here's Sava. This site has 26 for Sava Max Payne. And... Uh, what was it? This site, I guess I, I guess I lost the other site for a moment here. No, here it is. But this site has 25 for Saba for Max Payne. So I, I'm not sure, actually not sure which one is correct. Anybody have a, have the, have the best source uh, for cassava for that? But let's take a look at the cues as well. The cues got a mat. Let me, let me refresh. I'll refresh all of these. The cues, the Max Payne is 
310, and we're still hovering above it, a little bit above it, 323. The SPY, this has, all, this has all the money. This is the S&P 500. So that's pretty close to its max pain. Its max pain is 414. It's at 422. It's got a little bit, uh, it's got eight bucks to go, but at 422, eight bucks is not a lot of money. So that's, that's pretty close to its max pain. IBB, this is the larger stocks of the biotechs. It is a little below its max pain. The smaller uh, stocks of the biotechs, XBI, we'll check that out. Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla. Let me uh, refresh all these. XBI. XBI's got some ways to fall, so that'll be interesting to watch. XBI, this is here's the first one that's not near its max pain. XBI is currently at 87.23. This is all of the biotechs equal weighted. So the smaller biotechs, which are more numerous, get uh, more weight. So, whereas IBB is cap weighted, so it's the larger biotechs influencing it most. So, and that one was near its max pain. We'll check out, we'll, we'll keep our eye on XBI. Is it going to get down to 82? There's the first one that's not near it. Apple, Apple's a little bit above its, its max pain, 172 versus 162. Amazon, uh, above its max pain, 138 versus 125. Google's pretty close, 119 versus 116. And Tesla, is pretty close as well, only $6 off near an $900 uh, price. So $881 versus $875. So that's pretty near its max pain. Pretty interesting, I thought. And then I should have included this when I tweeted the uh, stream out, right? and we would have got more people here. Uh, Axe, uh, someone in the Discord brought this up. I, 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 I didn't notice it soon enough. Axome Therapeutics, uh, which people have been talking about a little bit in the Discord and in, on the show. Uh, which is going after major depressive disorder. Remember, we like Compass uh, for treatment-resistant depression. Anyway, they got approved. They were supposed to be approved. But what does that do for you? When you get your drug approved, but it's supposed to, but people are expecting it to be approved, what, what happens? Is it a sell the, is it, do you get a huge bump or is it a sell the news type of thing? They got a 33% bump, so pretty good. And then that's on the back of, if we look at how they've been doing They're, they're off of, let me move myself here. Move myself, oh, I opened the wrong thing. That is off of 19, yes, yeah, so they're, they're, they were at 19. They were at 19, uh, just a year ago, a year ago, so that's, they're a triple up from a year ago, so pretty good. And that's an, a triple from a year ago. And that's, that's it's been a rough year for biotech, so pretty good for them. Good job, Axome. And good to know, even on expected good news, you get a bump. Uh, we'll go back to Cassava here and go to the phones. Great to see you guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Let's ride into the weekend with some phone action. Let me, I'll put the Max Payne up there as well. Oh, this has insiders as well. Go back. All right. Either way, we'll go to the phones. Go into the phones. We got Investors Club says join the newsletters in the description. Join the newsletters in the description. Good show yesterday, Joe. What are you saying about today's show, Pale? <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Keith, hi Joe. Do you read the YouTube comments the day after recording a show? Usually I do. Uh, for the moment, there's enough of there's few enough of them where I usually see them all, and I try to give each one a thumb up if it's not mean. <laughs> uh, we have written a few comments over the past few months, but you have never seemed to respond on your next show or YouTube. Frankly, I, I must say, Keith and Suzanne, thank you for that. You don't look familiar. Um, I don't know if your comments are not getting posted or if I'm just missing them. I apologize if I do. Please, uh, please, uh, I, thank you for commenting. Thank you so much. Uh, please, uh, please ask now and I'll, I'll be happy to. This is the best thing about the show is when it's interactive. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I would love to answer your stuff. Hi, Joe. Staying long on Sava has been such a ride. In your opinion, do you have a gut feeling that breakthrough therapy doesn't have, designation will happen by Q1 or of 2023. Great shoe as usual. Thanks. No, I don't think so. I think that uh, it should have happened already. Breakthrough therapy designation. 
Breakthrough therapy designation has two requirements, has to be a, a fatal or serious disease, and then no good treatments. And Alzheimer's disease is just uh, in, in uh, has a, a, both of those, uh, an A plus in both of those. So they should have had it already. They got placebo already. They got year long, 100 people already in open label. Uh, it's safe, 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 safe. So what do you want? What are you waiting for? People are dying. Alzheimer's is always fatal. So it should be already. But uh, if we look, go back to the, the pour water on the fireside chat, Mr. Barbier was asked about the cognition maintenance study being possibly designed for breakthrough therapy designation. He couldn't say no to that. It seems that that, that, that is our, our best hope. It's phase two still, even though this company's in phase three with two large phase threes being uh, started already, uh, cognition maintenance study, they went in, uh, into their end of phase two meeting and came out and said, we're not done phase two. Uh, we, we, we extended that open label into a placebo controlled trial. So we're still not done phase two, even though we're going, we're already in phase three. So you get breakthrough therapy designation traditionally on phase two. So that's, it would seem that that's what it's for. And Mr. Barbier couldn't deny that. And uh, <clears throat> so in, we'll get, it, it really couldn't be before April. Let's say that we'll see, we should see the six month data according to Cassava's latest presentation. The timing just doesn't add up. They, we're gonna get cognition maintenance study data and it's before it's done. So it just doesn't add up to anything except we're getting six month data. The clock really starts around April for that. We know that the open label will be done September of this year. There could be a small gap until the cognition maintenance study officially starts for everybody. Uh, and then, uh, then it's six months from there. So April is really the earliest. They had said July, August, September. So they said Q3 approximately. To me, they're, they're, they're giving themselves some time. I think April, May, June, we can possibly expect it, but April to July, I think is, is the range to look for maybe May, June, something like that. But anyway, after April, I'd, I'd say, I would say in April, the clock starts that they can then, that they could remember they're blinded to cognition maintenance study. April, the clock starts to get that and report it and possibly here uh, get, uh, possibly submit uh, for breakthrough therapy designation to the FDA and hear back starting at that time. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. We just subscribed Keith and Suzanne. Thank you so much. Keith and Suzanne are talking about comments after the show, not during the show. You usually go to the phone during the show. Yes, thank you. And then I do try to, uh, I do try to uh, read all the comments because it's, it's not like there's all that many. I do try to read all the comments in the YouTube. Uh, so I, I do try to, I'm sorry if I've missed them. And then also, I don't know, sometimes uh, if you post links, maybe that was it, Keith and, and Suzanne, because people have said that to me before. You, 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 you're you skipping my questions. Why don't you answer my questions? It's when people post links. And I think the same thing goes in the comments as well as the chat. If you post links, they won't uh, post it, I think. So our main question is, why do you only support Sava and not AVXL? I do. Uh, I'm not against Anavex. Uh, I, I think it'll work. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I, I wonder if it's going to be disease modifying because it's uh, method mechanism of action is the Sigma one alpha receptor, which is the Nepazil's uh, target receptor. So it could be that their ligand, their thing that hits the receptor is doing something a little bit different, but it's a stretch for me to say that it's going to be drastically different. So that's why I'm not as excited about it, but that's also why I expect it to work because we know denepazil works. I just, I, I just am dubious on it being the, uh, the a, a cure type thing. However, we do know that a cure type thing might look like a cocktail of drugs. So maybe, so I do like it. And, and I've, uh, when I first, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, when I first wrote about cassava about almost two years ago, Anavex was the stock I looked at first, and at that time, I was a little bit negative on Anavex, it is true, but I have since uh, not gone negative at all on Anavex for a long time. I, I'm for it. Uh, I hope they're very successful, and I hope shareholders make a lot of money. I'm just not as excited about as I am about cassava, and it seems like they've never met with the FDA about Alzheimer's disease. They've met with the FDA about RET, but not Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and they don't, they're not running any trial sites in the United States for Alzheimer's disease. Compare that to cassava, which they have special protocol assessment from the FDA for their phase threes, meaning if their if phase threes are successful, it will lead to approval. Whereas Anavex never even met with the FDA. 
And then, and not that I'm trying to be to talk bad on Anabex, but there was some things in their history. Remember yesterday we talked about management and management's history is what it is. And some of the people there uh, did some things that were not, if you look in the, the back of their history, that, that, I didn't, that I didn't, shareholders should not like. So there you go. So, but thank you so much for your questions. And, I, and I'm for, and I'm still like, we, we're up against big pharma and, and big pharma does not have uh, patients, uh, best interest in mind. So these little companies that are battling against big pharma, I'm not trying to say anything negative about them at all anymore, or I'm for them. I'm trying to, I'd rather support them even if they're not perfect type of thing. And so that, that's, that's my entire thing on NFX. Good morning, Joe. You missed the impact factor chart. Have a great weekend, my friend. What impact factor chart on Axome or on the Max Payne or on the two billions of options expiring? Elvando, hey Joe, always nice to see your show. Thank you. The last two days have been utterly frustrating. Can we expect something good by end of year? Uh, the, you know, the more frustrating it gets, the more shares are being fabricated and the larger the mother of all short squeezes is going to be on an unlocking event. Uh, they've got the goods, it seems, and that those goods are worth quite a bit more than the, what is the current market cap? One billion dollars? Worth about 224 times that, conservatively by one measure, by one of our measures, conservatively worth 224 times that. So, I mean, agreed, we're all frustrated with the, it, it shoots up and then on incredible volume, gives it all back. It seems like they're shorting the heck out of it, it sure does. And I think they are. I think we all think that they are. So, uh, but they're, they're, that's that's why we talk about the blockchain on a regular event. That's why we talk about dividends. When they get a partner, they can get a cash payment up front, and they can pay it out as a dividend, and they can screw the shorts that way. So, there's got to be an unlocking event. Uh, we're all frustrated, my friend. G R P P R. Good morning, Joe. Are there any other stocks similar to Saba, which has high growth potential? Join the small caps newsletter. I give you two small caps a month. Uh, that have all that, that are going to the moon, my friend. Uh, we just did Rocket Lab and uh, Sport Trader, both of which shot up about 50% right away. The month before was Galactin and DBVT. Galactin doubled right away, and DBVT was up 30 or 40% right away. Now, the, the market recovered as well, but our stocks did a lot better than the market. So, there you get two a month, my friend. Join the Small Caps newsletter. And I didn't, haven't done August yet, so in the next 30 days, has September, in the next 12 days, we've got two small cap stocks that are going to the moon coming, and they're, I mean, they're going to be founder-led, and they're probably going to be, I've got a lot of stocks that I like, but I'll get excited about two. They're going to be founder-led. Also, I'm on the cusp of being incorporated, so soon we'll, we'll be actually uh, hitting the airwaves and, and getting the, our, our message out there, and people will be finding these stocks. So anyway, uh, sign up for the newsletter. You get the Discord and the book as well. The, guy, my, the book I wrote, My Guide to Crushing the Market. It's a great book. I put a lot of time into it. Jake, thank you very much, GRP, for asking. Jake, Max Payne next week is $19. Hoping to grab more shares Friday, but not sure if they'll be successful in holding it down. That is uh, bad news. 19 bucks next week. That's a little bit scary. Of course, I don't want to get scared of making a self-fulfilling prophecy. Trin, good to see you. It's much easier for hedge fund to force max pain on small bio cap compared to big cap. Absolutely. Yeah. The small, the, the smaller the, the market cap is, the easier it is to push around. Some of the like stock like IKT. Let's look, let's look at IKT's volume today. This, it works for the good and the bad, so it's it's good and it's bad. But IKT's volume today is 18900 and it's trading for less than a dollar. That means that less than $20,000, could, could it could have been all you today making it go wherever it went. So imagine if you really uh, loved or hated uh, IKT and you wanted to put, put $200,000, put 10 times that amount in there. You could drive it, you could short it with $200,000, probably drive it to into the 60s right now, or you could, you could maybe drive it up to into the 90s uh, with your less than a quarter million bucks, perhaps. Uh, but then, then if you go look at Apple, 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 where's Apple? 
Uh, oh, can never find an Apple. There's Amazon. Amazon's volume is 74 million and they're $138 per share. So that's like what, 74 billion or whatever it is. Seven billion, seven, whatever it is. So they're 10 billion or something like that. You need a, you would need uh, 200 billion. You need a quarter trillion to have the, the same proportional impact on IKT. Yep. So that's why they do, that's why they, that's why they can push around the small stuff. Hey, JC. Hi, Joe. Good to see you, JC. Are you familiar with TPRFF GCM mining? If you can take a look, give us your opinion. Well, let's do it right now. TPRFF. TPR. How do you spell TPRFF? <laughs> What's the number for 911? TPRFF. Let's go to the profile and see what they do. Grand Colombian Gold is a Canada-based mid-tier gold producer with primary focus in Colombia. So right away, and here's my thoughts. It's a minerals play. So uh, it's the old economy, the one we all have, have enjoyed from uh, 1950 to uh, 2015 or 1945 to 2015 or whatever it is, uh, it was based upon the U.S. having an amazing Navy and wanting to win the Cold War against the Soviets and going to every country in the world and saying, you can trade freely and don't worry about your boats and you don't have to have your own defense. You don't have to make your own food or have your own energy. You can Whatever you're good at, just do that and you can trade without having to worry about anybody messing with you. And all these countries came into... Uh, the modern economy and literally billions of people were born that never would have been born. And now uh, we don't need to win the Cold War anymore and everything is going regional. And it seems the United States will just have the Western Hemisphere. It doesn't need to patrol the Straits of Hormuz when it's got fracking. So every, anyway, the whole old order is falling apart. And so there's so two things about materials one, there's going to be less demand for materials. If you're not industrialized, you have no chance. India, or not, excuse me, not India, uh, China, unfortunately, is, is maybe in for a horrible, uh, the, the, basically, they're going to have to, everybody's going to have to leave the cities and go back to farming. Uh, a, a subsistence farming is basically what, what it might happen. 85% of their energy and food is imported. And there's uh, their demographics for everything is, and anyway, I digress. So, uh, for on one end, uh, all, nothing, the countries, it's been such artificial growth, artificial growth for a lot of the world. And they're going to, unfortunately, fall out of the world economy. They need a regional economy to be a part of, and some are going to be okay, and some are not. Uh, anyway, so the upshot there is you need materials in your regional economy. It's going to become very important. and Right, because you can't, you can't just source from all over the world anymore. Uh, and, but then also there's going to be less demand. There was the idea that China is going to grow forever. And, and I even talked about like a month ago, you know, copper, eventually China's, uh, you know, there's like most of the world's not even online. Eventually everybody's going to go online and we're, they're going to need a lot of copper and stuff like that. That seems pretty idealistic now to me. Uh, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of people are going to be in big trouble and have to go back to subsistence farming. The last 75 years is the, <laughs> the best humanity's ever had it. And in some ways, for a lot of people, it's the best that it will ever be. So maybe, hopefully not. Maybe we'll see. Anyway, so on one hand, materials, there's going to be less demand than, than, than I and others were forecasting, perhaps. Uh, but then also, they can become more important to have in your regional economy. So that, that's, that, that's, that's my view of that. And then gold, I've got DRD gold. I'm, I'm a little agnostic on gold. There's, there's such good reasons to think there's going to be more inflation. Then there's such good reasons to think there's going to be just less demand in general for everything and less money available. Another thing about the money available, the, the, the pale primate has me thinking, this, a lot of this e wonders if this equals out, that we could, we could actually be okay because there's really, good, there's really good reasons on both sides we might not be okay. And it can balance out. Uh, but the, uh, the baby boomers... Uh, is a, such a large generation. They've got their, we're all were in their prime earning years and then some most, a lot still are. And so their money is in stocks and, and corporate bonds and, and things with risk. And, and eventually that's just all going to leave and the risk assets uh, are, could be in trouble that way. 
and uh, and and that's and that's just it's just it's 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 a lot like it's a lot like the the Fed just put just just putting money into the market. They'll just buy up Treasuries, and eventually it'll flow out to everything else. So in that way, everybody switches to Treasuries, so maybe it'll, it'll still flow out. I don't know now. Now that has me second guessing it. Anyway, that's my so th- those are my views going into it. Uh, Columbia, that should still be okay. Western Hemisphere should still be uh, those those. C lanes should still be safe. C lanes that were, were used to be safe no longer are going to be safe. Piracy is going to make a huge comeback. Ships are going to be armed, well armed, uh, in order if they're, if, if they're going to travel internationally. Uh, so, and what do we got a market cap? Two hundred fifty million market cap. I like that. Uh, so that that is the sweet spot. About a quarter of a billion. That's the sweet spot. Let's go to their website. And so yesterday, Quezzy said, I want to do some due diligence on IKT. So I said, normally just look at their, find out what they do, see, see where they are, see what their market cap is. So we did that. Okay, now we'll take a, a, a deeper look at their investor page on their website. The first thing I'm going to look for here is the, uh, I want to see if they've got a founder. If it, it's, I'm not, it's, so I'm, like, I'm, I'm okay on them. They're, what are they, Canadian, I guess, but they're Western Hemisphere, they're fine. Uh, I'm okay on them. But if they've got a founder, then then I'm more interested. Investor resources. Do 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 about us management. Okay, so they have it there. Uh, Lombardo assumed the role in 2014, so he's not a founder. But sometimes the founder could be like chairman. Okay, here's the chairman. Currently director and chairman do to do. Okay, so there's no founder here. So that, that, that's, okay, co-founder of a different one. Okay, so there's no founder there and that's, that, that, I wouldn't rule it out for that. Uh, I, but, so it's, it's a, I'll, I'll, and, then, and then the next thing I would do, so then we said investor page and then the presentation, events and presentations. That's their first, their first quarter presentation might be it. I'm just going to go to their presentation support and just see if that's it. Okay, there's their latest presentation. Let's just have them tell us why they like this so much. Okay, so they've just merged two companies. Blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'll stop there. I'm sorry about that. All right, I'll stop there. So, eh, that's, I'm, if you're a gold bug, it's in the West. There's, it didn't, nothing ruled me out there. It's in the Western Hemisphere. Also, do they pay a dividend? They've, oh, their PE is 4.9. They do. They okay. They pay a five point four seven percent dividend. Now I'm like, now you've got my attention. It's a dividend. Uh, it seems to be profitable. We'd have to take a closer look at their financials. That that PE seems a little funny. It's so it's uh, such a good PE. So we'll have to take a uh, take a closer look at the financials. But I'm liking it that it's got a dividend. I'm liking it for its market cap. I'm liking that it's in the Western Hemisphere. I'm liking that it's materials. I'm neutral that it's gold. I'm neutral that it's Canada. I, I guess I'd rather it be US, U.S. But whatever. Uh, the dividend uh, you have to if it was since it's not U.S. you have to think about uh, withholding. Now there's a treaty U.S. and Canada. You can actually have Canadian s- dividend payers in your IRA with no withholding if you do it right. But anyway, so thank you for thank you for asking that. In my opinion, AVXL says P. Cigarn is far behind Saba. The reason being, AVXL has not met with FDA even for the trial they completed about for adult Red a few months back. Really, yeah, that that's uh, the Red. I'm wondering if AVX Anavex 273 is somewhat like the Nepazil since it's hitting the same receptor, and so I'm wondering if they're if if Red for kids. It, it's so it's working on acetylcholine. Well, so is nicotine, and it's the the if you've ever taken 
denepazil and had nicotine, they're similar feeling. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's, it could have a benefit, but again, is it disease modifying? I, I do wonder. I don't mean to talk smack on it, but I do, I don't, I do wonder. Imagine how far they are. And then now having said that, with nicotine in dementia, for example, there are studies that show that you get a benefit perhaps from nicotine, not just proximally in the short term from the stimulant, but that it's actually having some longer term benefit of some kind in some gene types, in some people. So it seems to depend. Nicotine could actually have some sort of a longer term benefit for dementia for depending on your genetics. So that so maybe denepazil is or NFX273 is having some sort of longer term benefit, maybe for some people, depending on your genes, who knows? Imagine how far they are from Alzheimer's success, given they've not even talked to the FDA about Alzheimer's yet. So that, that's, that's, that's my caution. I, who knows? I'm, I'm rooting for them, but that's, that's my, uh, there, there's reason for caution there. Thank you, uh, Pisa Garn. Uh, Jake, plus one impact factor chart in the discard from last night. Uh, you know what? Let's grab it right now. Let's grab it right now. Thank you. Uh, we were in the Discord last night. Jaker was Jaker brought us the plus one. Remember, there we have it. There we have it right there. Remember, we were saying uh, we, we wanted to look at the uh, what do you call it the pres prestige the pres the the prestige of these different journals. We wanna look at how prestigious these different journals were. And uh, so the Journal of Neuroscience, we got number one, holy moly, 73.24. So thank you very much, Jaker. Uh, Neurobiology of Aging, Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's, number three. So these are big journals. So this, the one they just got cleared from is number three here. Or I guess, it, I'm not even sure. And then the Journal of Neuroscience, So yeah, I think I I believe yeah, because Journal of Neuroscience that's that that's a prestigious that's a really good so the, the, the being having a have being a, a big number is good a big number is good for this so yes Journal of Neuroscience very prestigious uh, and then same thing with uh, Neuro Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's what they just got cleared by yeah thank you very much Jaker and if you can give us more color on that please do I grabbed it quick without getting the all the background. Hi, O Silver. I bought back in a small position at, let me get back to Cassava here. I bought back in at a small position 2505 before the show and you're already up 2%. I do believe the farther we get from the insider buying, buying this story, the stock will fall back to around 20 to 22 as early as the end of next week. It could, you could be right, Silver. Who knows? Who knows? Hi, Joe. Good to see you. Hope your weekend is wonderful. Uh, Jay, thank you so much. It's great to see you. I hope your weekend is wonderful as well. I got a thumbs down. Sorry, I was distressed. Somebody thumbs down me. I'm like, ah, it's probably from Anavex. I'm not, not talking Anavex up more. I like Anavex. I'm rooting for it. Jay, I hope you have a great weekend, uh, my friend. I will miss you over the weekend. I'll be in, uh, incorporated, uh, or at least I'll have my final thing file to be incorporated. I should have done it sooner, but I didn't figure out what to do the right way. Anyway, I'll, I'll finally be uh, there. So that'll be exciting over the weekend. And it'll be, I hope you have a great weekend too, my friend. Thank you so much. Peace, Cigar. So max pain for this week, 26 for next week, 19. Means we can sell Savannah. Bye back. Max pain is not always right, my friend. You when, uh, This was just at 20. People that wrote calls at 20 are you know not very happy. Uh, Maybe over the weekend they announce a partner and you're out. Who knows? I mean, or maybe it goes to 19. Who knows? I'm hodling myself. Hodling myself. Keith, we don't want to hog comments, but one more. Uh, no problem. AVX is uh, phase three top line data for all summer should come out September or October. So it seems we're splitting your investment to possibly get a big time payout soon. Maybe so. Who knows what that will uh, will show? Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I'm hoping for them. We'll see. It, it's... I, again, I expect it to work. I expect them to show denepazil-like efficacy, and we know denepazil works. So that, that's what I'm expecting. And if they can show better than denepazil or better safety, now denepazil is pretty safe, uh, or uh, 
perhaps it maybe just has some other characteristics. It's a different ligand, so it's the same receptor, but what attaches to the, the receptor is called a ligand, and their ligand's a little different than it's just a different drug. So what's attaching is a little bit different, but it's still the same receptor. So you could you could expect some differences, but drastically different things, maybe not. Uh, so I'm expecting it to work, and then if they can show that it works better than denepazil, terrific. Uh, that maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know, but it's it seems to be working through acetyl acetylcholine, I guess. Like denepazil is, I guess, because it's that receptor. So maybe not, though. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but th that's my expectation: is that it will work about as well as the nepazil, and then any difference from there will be interesting. Uh, in if when Sava gets FDA approval, what is your best guess median stock price target for the following six months, and what is your most conservative lowest price target? Uh, following approval, four digits. We should be easily in three digits now. Four digits shouldn't seem all that wacky. Uh, so I'll, I'll say four digits for, for approval. What is your best guess for, for when, if when Sava gets FDA approval, best guess means for the following six months and most conservative lowest price target. If it gets approval, uh, then my conservative one is four digits still, I'll say a thousand. And then we, we, at a, a, a somewhat conservative yet somewhat optimistic, uh, because it's somewhat conservative in that we didn't do global any populations. Uh, we didn't do any growth at all in a big growth market. We didn't do any other indications, even though they could get other indications. Uh, and we didn't do prophylactic use, even though it seems safe and possibly good for prophylactic use, which would be a huge market. And we still took, did, we, we didn't do an exorbitant price of the drug, even though it could be the only life-saving drug around. Uh, we didn't do more than 50% of the market, even though you could argue with Alzheimer's is always fatal, that more than 50% of people will take it. Anyway, in, in that way, it's conservative. In another way, it's not, con in another way, it's optimistic in that it gets to market and is the only one and is uh, not destroyed by big pharma, but uh, welcomed by big pharma and partnered. Uh, anyway, uh, my, so, so I'll, my, my best guess will be the one we did. $5,100 uh, based on the projection we did the other day. And then my most conservative, it will, will still be four digits. I'll say a thousand because whatever could, big pharma was able to, to somehow destroy them. I don't know. <laughs> P. Sigarn, Keith and Suzanne, I highly doubt with those dates given the track record of Missling. That's their CEO. I, I will say Cassava uh, it seems to be more... Now they're, they've had, they're being sued, so maybe they're not as forthcoming and transparent as usual, but they are. They're forthcoming and transparent with their results and things. I don't get, I don't get that feeling from, uh, from Missling. For example, on, on the one call, they asked them, now, now this one study was just for Australia, but then now you changed it and it's, you've opened up, you're, you, you were going to do it all in Australia, now you're not. You're doing it partly in Australia and partly in these other countries. And their answer was, yes, well, it's better to do it and to have more countries is better. Okay, but you could have said that all along. That was always the answer. If it's better to have more countries, you could have always said there was something that changed there, and, and they wouldn't even address it. They, and, and they wouldn't even. They just dis, they were not, they they don't seem to want to answer questions. They, they don't. I don't know. They, they, they seem to not feel like shareholders deserve questions. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe your feeling is different. But I, I, I get a different feeling from from Cassava. Like we talked about yesterday, evaluating management. You should go with your gut. I liked Cassava. Not that I didn't like Anavex. But I, I liked cassava as far as management. Uh, Jay, did you see the guy from Univest with a minus 8% lifetime return rate at a zero by tip ranks restated his sell rating on cassava with $8 price target? He's so bad, it's almost like you should do the opposite. I, I think that might be the guy that is, seems to possibly be in cahoots with somehow uh, pumping up Chinese stocks that are dubious businesses, businesses. I think that if that's the guy I'm thinking of. Uh, Robert, great to see you. Robert, Mr. Champy, great name. Thanks, Joe. Enjoy the weekend. We will get him next week. We'll get, we'll, we'll get him next week, Mr. Champy. I hope you have a great weekend, my friend. Love your picture, man. You look, you look like a cool guy. Keith and Suzanne, if you have a chance, look at AVX's, uh, Anavex's corporate presentation. I've looked at it. Uh, I, I've, I've looked at it. It's, it's, I'm for them. I'm not against them. 
Wakis, my friend. Wakis and Iman, great to see you. Been a long time, long time. Hey, Joe, good to see you and look forward to see much better Sava days in the coming months. Me too, my friend. Hopefully, we all get a lovely gift on Iman's birthday this winter. So we'll be coming up on the... This show we started in November, I think. So we'll be coming up on the one-year anniversary of the show. It was not too long into the show that we, we celebrated Iman's ninth birthday. I guess you'll have her 10th birthday coming up. Won't that be fun? Hit the double digits. Uh, great to see you guys. Thank you for being here. Peace, cigar, and that was a joke, LOL, Joe, LOL. Uh-oh, what did I take too seriously? What did I take too seriously? The track record of missling. Oh. Oh, my comment regarding selling Sava now and buying back. Oh, it was a joke. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean... In the short term, I'm just, it, it, that could, any strategy you say, any strategy you say could possibly be the best short term strategy. It, it's, in the short term, the stock does not make a lot of sense. Uh, so, <laughs> I, but, so, but thank you. Okay, it was a joke. I have not sold even a single share of Sava and would not until it is in the in four digits. I love it, my friend. Hodling, I think, is the best, is the best thing here. It, the controversy, the, artificially fabricated controversy is not going to stop until they're in until this <laughs> drug belongs to big pharma we just have to ride it out $5100 says pale wow uh was it thursday or friday or something like that wednesday thursday friday last week i think we did the uh, we looked at uh we looked at there was an independent board that looked at aduhelm to re make recommendations for what it should be priced at and when it was still thought that it might be useful, they did an optimistic projection, and the midpoint was 16,660. So that's what we went with for cassava, even though you could definitely say cassava, Aduham never looked nearly, nearly, nearly as efficacious as cassava. It always looked more dangerous, and it was always a trans, uh, an infusion, not a pill. So you could say that uh, charging less than one third of that, uh, of what Aduham was priced at, and what this midpoint optimistic point by this independent board is very fair. And that was before inflation. And that's the number we used. And then we went with 3 million people. There's 6.5 million Americans with AD. It's growing very large. And that's only a small sliver of the rest of the world. We went with 3 million. Uh, and then uh, we went with the 4.5 time multiple as for the peak sales year. Biotech assets, biotechs and their assets are getting bought out for four, point, uh, four to five times projected peak sales. So we went with 4.5 times the multiple, came to 224 billion 910 million, my friend. That's where we get that, and then divided by 44 million. Some thoughts on Bed Bath and Beyond was up 500 percent in not too long of a time, and uh, then an activist took his money and ran and sent it down like what 60 percent. Uh, easy come, easy go is my thought, I suppose. Down 38% at the moment. Yeah, it was down here at 5, ran up to 30. Yeah, so it went, it went 5 to 30, and then now it's back to 11. Easy come, easy go, I guess is my thought. Thank you for bringing that up, Ruben. That's, a, that, that's one we should be talking about. Thank you, my friend. Uh, when we're when, when when we're monetized, I think we're talking about the the hot stocks like that, Bed Bath and Beyond, X X Zone, whatever's whatever's happening that day, I think we'll do a bit more of that. In addition to all of our favorites, do you have an opinion about Bingo? Is that Bio Nano? I used to. I think I used to know that one. I've lost touch with that one. Bio Nano. Let's take a quick look at Bio Nano because I, I, I used to know this one and I forgot about it. Bio Nano Genomics. Let's look at their management. Dynamic Leader, their president and CEO. It does not bode well for foundering. Okay, no founders there. Again, I'm not going to dismiss it. Uh, but we would prefer a founder. Corporate overview. That's the is that their latest presentation? Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Here's their presentation. Pioneer and leading innovative optical genome. Well, people are getting old, and if you don't want to go after their Alzheimer's, their eyes is a good one. My poor dog's going blind. Next week, a big, big biology and value creation will be driven by structural variation analysis, molecular diagnostics. Now, there's diagnostics. Remember, we're a little bit hesitant on diagnostics in the Discord. We were someone brought up the fact that it, they were saying that it's a bit of a uh, secret, uh, dirty secret in the industry that they don't want diagnostics because they want to sell drugs to people that don't have what they <laughs> uh, are told that they have. Uh, so that seemed to unfortunately make a little bit too much sense. And then I guess there are some good diagnostics companies, but not a ton. There, there's, you'd rather have devices or drugs. So, but uh, then again, in the future, using your genome is going to be a big thing, personalized medicine. So, uh, Let's see where they are in their timeline, if we get to that. Oh, they've already got revenue. They're doing devices, systems installed. If they're, since they've already got revenue, let's look at their financials. Okay, so they've, they've already got revenue. So you wanna see that they're, uh, they're growing and not spending more money to grow. So 2019, 10 million, 2020, 8 million, 2021, 17.98. So eventually they got it going. That's, let's go to quarterly and see how they're doing lately. 6.3 down to 5.7, up to 6.67. So not great growth, but some growth. And then the cost of revenues, 6.06 .06 down to 4.84, uh, up to 5.2. But they seem to have done a little bit better. If, so when they had 6.06 .06 spent, they got 6.3 million in revenue. They brought it down to 5.2 and got 6.6 .6, uh, revenue. So the revenue went up. So their gross profits. If, now, sometimes let's look at the SGNA. Ha! They may have hidden it in the. They hide this stuff in the SGNA. So we're looking at the revenues here. Of I know it's hard for you to see. I can't make this larger on Webull. Sorry about that. But the revenue is 6.6 .6 million and the previous high revenue was 6.3 million and the cost of revenue dropped though from 6.06 .06 to 5.2. So they, they, the cost of their revenues dropped as they got their highest revenues. Great, but you gotta watch because sometimes these companies hide the cost of their revenues in their SG&A, selling, general, and administrative. You can put anything you want in there basically. And so they're, when they had their best quarter it was 18 million in those expenses. And that jumped up by more than, by, by three and a half million, accounting for much more than all of the cost of revenue. So I'm not impressed that way. Operating income dropped. So then, then, then you see it in the operating income. So they went on their previous best quarter, they lost 28 million. And now their newest best quarter, they lost 32 million because they seem to have hidden their costs in their SGNA. So no, uh, good growth that I see, no founder, no dividend, uh, their diagnostics, which I kind of don't like. So that, that, that is a very quick, I'm, I'm not saying that's a good, uh, analysis of that stock or a fair one. It's just a quick one, but as a quick cursory look, uh, I can, I can see why I've lost touch with it. I'll say. Also, I th the reason I think I might have made my radar is I think it might have been bullied by the shorts in the first place. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to pile on it. Have a great weekend, Joe. Have a great weekend, Jay. Thank you my, very much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll miss you guys over the weekend. Uh, be in the Discord, join the newsletters, and we'll, uh, we're always in the Discord on the weekends. Larry, hi, Joe. What do you know about patent accusations against Compass? From the beginning, when I looked at that stock, it was a lot of battling. Uh, there's purists that say you cannot patent uh, what God gave us. And so far, Compass has been winning in the, in the, in the court. Uh, so it seems like that, that has been uh, on the radar since the beginning. And it seemed like they were going to win. I think I wrote about it when I, when I first covered it. Uh, so it's... That, that's been a thing, but it seems like they were in good shape. 
Keyshawn, Joe, have a great and joyful weekend, my friend. Keyshawn, thank you. I hope you have a great and joyful weekend too, my friend. Hope you have a great, best weekend of your life and very safe too. Silver, can you remind us which data will be out by the end of 2022? The biggest data that will be out is the full year open label. The full cohort of 200 people should be wrapped up by September. And then we should hear that, I think, in October. Mr. Barbier once upon a time said October, then he said Q4, Q4. So we'll see. We could even get it in September, who knows? Uh, but we, and we could also get biomarkers with that. But the, the open label, the full cohort of 200 people on that drug for more than a year, if most of those people improve, holy moly, we already saw it with 100 people, most of them improved. So very safe as well. Very safe. Bought some AFMD. Interesting stock. Should we take a quick look? We've been on for 55 minutes. Holy moly. Maybe we'll have to wait, wait on that one, my friend. Thank you. But I think we might have to wait on that one. Have a great weekend, my friend. Ray, have a great weekend, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you for all that. John, uh, my, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Pensy, here is one for you, Joe. A small Swedish Bayak ECTIN. I'll check these out over the weekend. We've been on for almost an hour. I probably got to uh, uh, wrap it up here. PR from Anavex. Disease modifying small molecule in trials. Can't post the link. Yep, it's um, I'm, I'm, and then like we said, it's it seems uh, it seems the best guess because they 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 say we are agonizing uh, sigma one. All of the downstream effects of agonizing sigma one is not known. So they they, they say we're not trying to say we know exactly every downstream effect. Uh, but maybe the reason they're saying that is because it's acetylcholine is the expected downstream effect and and. Uh, uh, and, and but then but then like we've seen with nicotine in some people with some genes, regular nicotine does have a long term benefit in, with dementia, not just proximally near term but a longer term. So, so I'm not 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 totally against. But I've I've, I've checked it. I'll, I'll check it out some more, uh, and I'll, I would even be happy to have uh, Dr. Missling on. Of course, let me get monetized first. Thank you guys. Great seeing you. Great chatting. Uh, and then I'm loving doing some of this uh, live research. And I'll check these other ones out. Join the newsletters. You'll get the Discord and the book. And you get the stocks before they come out and blow up. And we're going to get monetized because I finally uh, I got my Delaware thing going. Uh, so that'll be all great. Great to see you guys. I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great weekend. See you in the Discord.